Hello, dear tribe members. Jen here. Long time no see. <laughs> um, sorry this is taking so uh, long to get on here, but it's been a whirlwind uh, this year and for the past uh, couple months to a year now. Um, I just wanted to come on here and share with you what I've actually been experiencing in the last few months and, as well as what's been happening with me uh, so that maybe some of you can resonate. Um, so I am not necessarily going to wait for people to come on, um, because I know you guys can catch this in the replay. And yeah, one of the things that I ended up doing is cutting my hair. Um, it was actually an accident, because I put it up in a ponytail and then uh, my cat bumped my arm. And so I was like, okay, well it's already cut, so I might as well do it. So that was, that was me getting used to the shortness of my hair. And I didn't like it at first, but I figured... It's a change and it's a way for me to adapt and be okay with change. Uh, one of those kind of things where we have to kind of move through the uncomfortable feelings that we have when we're in different situations. It's kind of like a training, so to speak. Alright, so don't mind me if I'm all over the place. I didn't really script this out. Hey Kristen! Um, it's kind of a little bit here and a little bit there, but what I wanted to come on is uh, source has been telling me to just explain what's been going on. Um, hey Debbie! And basically inform you guys of all the crazy um, energies that are going on. So everybody knows 2020 has been one heck of a transformational year. Um, not one that we necessarily would write into the books as a good year. Um, some people, maybe. Other people, not so much. Some people in the middle of the road. So there are actually a lot of things um, that are happening in the ethers, that are happening out in the world stage, that are happening with this pandemic, that are happening with a lot of the other agendas that are underneath all that stuff. I'm not necessarily going to get into all of that subdivision um, because it's already been like beaten with a bed uh, broom or whatever you want to say. I'm not used to those kind of things. Um, but for me, I've been mainly just focusing on not attaching to that as much and just doing internal work, kind of like shadow work. Um, so first, you have to understand what's been going on with me in order for me to explain how I've been dealing with things. So I don't really remember the last time I was on here, but I think my grandmother was still alive at that point. So my grandmother actually ended up passing in February. There was a whole bunch of other stuff um, attached with her. There was actually, um, there was a lot of, I think, I'm pretty sure there was some kind of a negative um, energy attached to her towards the end. Um, it might have also been based off of her fear of the stuff that she um, didn't fully uh, complete in her life and she knew she was at the transition point. Um, but it also could be too that all of her life she was trying to control a certain kind of outcome and that outcome kind of blew up in her face towards the end there. Um, a lot of things too is she was fighting her own demons, uh, so to speak. She had a lot of other things that had to happen, um, that she was not willing to face. And, you know, well, no, towards the end there, then you know your passing is in, in, imminent and you start thinking a lot of these things and you start being like, oh my gosh, I probably chose the wrong thing here. I, I could have done better in this area or whatever. <sighs> Unfortunately, it kind of ended up where I wasn't really around her towards her passing. My older brother was um, because of the things that transpired right before when she started getting, uh, what can I say, not so nice. <laughs> um, and that was also partly to due to a lot of the things that were going on with her. She was in a lot of pain. Um, she wanted things to go her way. She was regressing back to her kind of childhood. She was actually kind of, um, for a little bit there, um, we had to put her on hospice, uh, because she had fallen multiple times and she wasn't listening to us and being safe at home. So she was on a lot of painkillers and then she was also seeing things. Um, now I didn't get the opportunity to see or like ask her who she was seeing or what she was seeing. Um, because she would come in and out of fluidity. Um, so it's, 
I did during this time in February actually get visited by my late uncle, which was really cool in a dream. Um, but he didn't stay long and he didn't say much. He just uh, was there. Um, and then um, I really do, like, little things started happening around the house. Like, little, um, like little things would go missing or I'd have phantom smells. Um, and then, like, cookie smells because he always loved cookies. Or um, I just, like, see his, the t his type of car all the time now. Like, he used to drive a red truck. Um, so it was, it was very interesting. Um, so it was just, and then finding pennies and little things and feathers and things. Um, little things, or in conversations, little people, people that didn't really know him would say a phrase that he would normally say. So it was just kind of him saying, hey, I'm here, I'm supporting you, I know it's hard, I can see what's going on, but you got to power through this, I know it's not fair to you, what's going on and things, and you're scared, and you're letting the fear get in, so just remember, it's not the fear, and, you know, just try to try to buckle down and just, you know, don't let the anger and the frustration make you bitter. So I was like, okay. Um, then she passed in February, and then we had a lot of other things, a lot of family drama, um, and then a lot of other things started happening. Um, towards the course of the summer in the spring, we ended up, I live here in New York, and then of course we ended up having the shutdown where the pandemic started and all that stuff. So at that time, I started losing hours at work. So my finances weren't going good and I was getting fear-based. So I did do a lot of internal work on fear-based algorithms, fear-based uh, paradigms, aka mindsets, things like that. And just really being okay with being not okay. Uh, a lot of a lot of that um, fear, working through the fear, knowing that the the universe or God or whoever you want to say, spirit, source, whatever, has your back. Um, and I didn't want to believe it at the beginning because it's so like you're trained in this this time period and everything to not believe that, to be like, no, if you don't have this, you're gonna end up this. And the relationship I was with, the guy that I was with for four years, was kind of in and out. Um, there was a lot of craziness. He was doing his own thing. He definitely also had something attached to him, but he was also in a building that I believe had a negative vortex in it. Um, because I was actually in there and I got out of there. I moved back here to the house. Um, and the energy was definitely different. Now, an interesting fact, too, is after mom actually ended up passing, my grandmother, I call her mom because she raised me, I was always a lifetime bugger. Always bit my nails like crazy. After she passed, all of a sudden I did not have the urge to bite my nails. I did not have the urge to eat uh, constantly and to fill my void and my, um, to defend myself with food, to internal food and to have like weight. So I started losing weight uh, because I was not feeding my, my defense mechanisms with food outside sources. So it was actually very, very interesting. Um, and then also, um, like, I just, I just felt better. Like, there was an energy in the house, and the house actually lightened up. It, like, it, it was just awesome. Um, it was just very interesting and very awesome to see. So, after that, um, then I brought my boyfriend over here for a little bit to help out, and he himself also had something attached to him, um, for a little bit there. And it was just kind of little bit of tension here because I also was working through my own stuff where I thought working with my grandfather and having him have like all these issues like a catheter you know and um, a pacemaker and having to think that he has to have food on the table at this time and we have to have a set schedule I was in the control mind and being in the control mind doesn't exactly help you um, it is actually one of the things that equals into the fear mind uh, so that's more external. It's not you knowing that you are of source and that you yourself can control the outcome regardless of what's going on. So me being fear-based, my macro ended up becoming crazy or my micro ended up becoming crazy because my macro was my outside, my inside was, it was causing me torment. So my outside world ended up mimicking that, uh, because I, felt that so my feelings were energy the energy responded to the universe and it brought you back what you basically felt so I started having more issues at home like things at my job I wasn't happy I just felt down and drained I couldn't get my energy back up things like this things that I was just like trying so hard to do and it just kept hitting a brick wall type of a thing 
So then at one point I just was like, I'm done. I just give it up. I can't keep fighting this. It's just draining me. Whatever's going to happen is going to happen. If I have to get kicked out, I get kicked out. If I have to, you know, lose my job and, you know, have to deal with the creditors or whatever coming after me for whatever that is with my credit card thing that had to happen, then so be it. And all those fears I had to sit with and accept being like, you know, there's nothing I can do about it. It's external. You know, I, all I can do is, is make sure I'm in control of my reaction to it. So it took a lot for me to be okay with that. Um, it took actually a couple weeks. And as I was doing that and just being like, whatever, bring it on, almost to a point where I was just like, kind of like, bring it on, whatever, I don't care no more. Things started getting better, oddly. Oddly, they started getting better. So it was actually kind of a lesson for me to learn how to see how if you just let go and stop trying to control your outward environment, things will actually manifest more for you. Hi, Danielle. So a lot of this also ends up being a, a lesson and a bunch of lessons for me. And also with all of the external things happening, the shutdown, me concerned about losing my job, my hours got cut, if I'm going to make financial means, things like that. But then when I gave it up and I just was like, whatever's going to happen is going to happen. I know that the, the, the universe has got my back however it wants to play it out. I will just be okay with that. And I am a survivor and I know I'm tough and I know that I can surmount anything. So after that, it was actually quite interesting because like I said, things started happening positively. Uh, I started getting um, my hours back at work. Um, I was offered to work on the weekends instead and I actually ended up doing that a little bit. Now granted it wasn't the prettiest thing and I would never do it again. <laughs> but I also got to learn a couple things about how the, the company was actually working on the inside. So things that I would not have known, which now, months later, I am glad I did because I know not to link myself in and think that they have my back when they don't. Whereas before I thought, you know, they were putting out a face and I was trying to believe that face because that's all that I thought. And in the background, it's me for me and me alone type of a mentality. So as an empath, it was kind of hard for me because I was feeling everybody's um, emotions. And then me, I, <laughs> when I'm in a conversation with somebody I'll and it, if somebody else is here, like I'll feel their energy and then I'll just start talking like them. For example... Case in point, a couple days ago, I went to the uh, gas station to pick up um, some small items. And I was talking to the girl, and I knew she wasn't feeling good, and she was just kind of like, mm. and I started talking to her, and I found out that her boyfriend dumped her. So I inquired, oh, okay, you know, was it a good relationship, whatever. And then she, she divulged that it wasn't, and it was an actual bad relationship. And then all of a sudden, I'm talking, and my boyfriend, who we'd been on again, off again, was standing there, and all of a sudden, when I'm talking to her, I go, girl, you don't need that boy. Mm -mm. And I started getting like ghetto. <laughs> and I'm like, I didn't know where this was coming from. And my, my tone, my voice, and the way my words were coming out of my mouth was completely different than when I'm talking to you right now. And I was kind of like, whoa, where's this coming from? Now, I didn't know, but my boyfriend, who had been up there a couple days ago, knew who her boyfriend was and found out that they were actually... Um, of black descent and that they basically had um, they, they had these mannerisms about themselves that I was portraying. So like that whole like mm -mm, don't you go there type of a attitude type of a thing or, and that kind of whole cultural um, feel. And so after I realized that I was talking to her a couple other things came up um, where I kind of like went oddly Mexican <laughs> And so I was like, blah, 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 you know, and I, I got these kind of things and she was like really intent and she understood what was going on. And, and for me, it was a lesson for me to realize that my energy is very sensitive because if I link myself with people who are um, compromised, so to speak, with uh, negative entities or uh, lower vibrations attached to them, not necessarily negative entities, but lower vibrations, maybe some bad habits, stuff that's not necessarily healthy for them and they're, you know, projecting onto me or something, my energy field feels that. And then so I take it on. Not on purpose. I don't mean to. I'm also still learning how to um, block some of that. So it's like a catch-22 for me somewhat. 
but a lot of that too is, is helping me to learn that I have a purpose now. Whereas before I kept myself meek, I kept myself mild, I kept myself in a box because I was trained by my family to be like, no, that's weird, don't do that, you're going to be humiliated, you're going to look like a fool out in the public, you need to be an adult, you need to just, you know, shut that down and then work, work, work. And so their idea of me when I was trying to do stuff like um, online work instead of a nine to five, it was all just down, down, down. So of course I'm taking on their energy. And so I'm trying to also find myself. So this whole entire month and everything here, it's just been a jumble, but it's also good because we need to feel this energy. We need to go through these lessons. We need to understand the other side of it, come out of it onto the other side, which is what we're working on now and into the summer solstice or the winter solstice, excuse me, and work to get that light quotient back in our bodies. Because this is what all this has been doing for the whole entire year. It's been bringing in the light quotient from the galactic center, helping us to purge and mix up and, and get that negative um, energies and blockages that we, you know, the things that we put deep down that we didn't really want to look at and we weren't willing to face. And to bring that up so we can dismantle it, be aware of it, say, hey, I see you. I'm not judging you, little piece of me that, you know, I didn't want to face before. And it's okay. I know you're scared. I know you, you know, you're afraid of what's going on and you don't want to be seen because you won't, you feel like you're going to be not validated, but I'm here to validate you. I'm here to accept that you are part of me as either my dark side, my light side, you know, my gray in between whatever aspects, um, that basically it's okay. And I, I incorporate you into my being. I honor you. You are part of me. We are part of the galactic center. We are spiritual beings and we are our souls and our galactic um, power. Basically, we're bringing back our power. So a lot of this is, is very, very intense. So along with a lot of this, we'll have uh, anger, frustration, uh, things that come up like pains, um, if you guys follow Lori Ladd, I've been sharing a bunch of things about Lori Ladd on here. She explains a lot of that stuff too. Um, a lot of things too is this year also is the first time that we have a conjunction of Saturn and Jupiter, which heralds back to the 1200s. So this is a big, big transformation and the portal from 1212 into 1221 is one of the last of this year, um, I don't know, galactic solar blasts that we can get so we can raise our vibration and become more aware of what we have to do with some more of our shadow work that we thought we had cleared out. Uh, because if we bring in more energy and more light, we have to make room for that. So if we're making room, we have to dislodge other pieces that are not exactly of our highest good. So we have to go through these uncomfortable situations. So... This is all just super, super intense. It's super um, crazy. And just know that you are doing exactly what you're meant to do. No matter if you react a weird way or whatever, nothing's right, nothing's wrong. Okay, don't judge yourself. Be honest with yourself. Feel the feels. Don't stay too long in them to drag you down to some more. But if like say what, what I was doing is in order to pass through that energy, I ended up going back to eating wheat which I'm not supposed to do. And it causes acne and things like that with me. And I was going back to chocolate. I was going back to ice cream, dairy, things that were comfort foods because I was bringing in so much light energy that I need. And my body felt so dislodged and crazy and it needed something to comfort it. So then I'm like, okay, well, I know this is not good, but hey, if my body is wanting this right now, it's okay. I'm not going to beat myself up for it because I know after this is done, then I can get back on track again. It's okay. It's not an end all fail all, you know. So when we have these instances where we're kind of like, oh my God, I really shouldn't have done that. I shouldn't have, you know, said that or, or I shouldn't have done that. The fact that you're actually even thinking about that and realizing that, okay, I could have done that situation a little better or I could have chose a better avenue for this or a better choice to put things into my body certain ways. That's what it's all about. It's all about being more aware of your actions, your external and your internal um, situations and environments. It's being more in the moment 
versus being like worried about the future or in the past. I'm working now on dissolving my past issues that I put in a box in like I locked, threw away the key and everything else. And I'm also dislodging a lot of the false idols that I put up about my family members because of the trauma that I went through when I was a kid. I had my brother on a high pedestal thinking that he was going to be quote unquote my savior and that I would always be able to count on him. And it wasn't healthy and it wasn't realistic. And that I did myself. And now from the situations that I've experienced dealing with my significant other and seeing the it turned on me to the point where I'm like faced with my not natural reality of the situation, I can actually break down that that mirror and see it and not be ashamed of how I did that, but actually go from here, learn from that, and not put myself in a position where I would be um, not manipulated by, but like put into like something like, like he is manipulating me, but I'm aware of it now. So right now with the situation, I can't exactly stop it, but I don't want to control it either. So I'm just waiting for the opportune moment when spirit and source tells me that it's time for me to speak up because sometimes it's not always good to speak up, even if you are right and you know the truth, because that can actually also cause more craziness and chaos down the line. Because if the person's not ready to listen to your truth, it's going to go on deaf ears and then you're going to cause yourself more trouble. So we also have to be aware of how we're going to go through these situations and when's the right time to be able to see when it's right to speak our truth or to show that other person what their truth is. I spoke my truth out of turn and it kind of backfired on me because I spoke about my significant other after he finally, a couple months ago, I had to call the cops on him and it was this whole big fiasco, but he had something negative attached to him. So after that, I actually had to tell him that he wasn't allowed here because I was threatened that I was going to get kicked out from my older brother and all this drama. And I fell for that fear, but at the same time, that situation I now see had to happen because I needed to see how my view of him, my older brother, was faulty and not realistic. And the fact that my boyfriend had to see that he couldn't stay here and whatever was attached to him was trying to use that to get to me and to be able to latch on to Chris, my boyfriend, more so he wouldn't let go. And when I denied him that safety and that, he was forced to actually go to a different place. Sorry, my battery went low. He was forced to go to a different place. I'll wrap this up in a minute. To the point where that land and that building was on sacred ground. So whatever was attached to him could not be attached to him anymore and had to leave. And now talking to him and seeing him and we're working it out and it's better, he's completely different. I can see the light shining from him. He is back to his original self. Now he had had this thing f with him for years, even before I even met him. And it was not liking my light and the fact that I was trying to get him to this place. But me alone, I couldn't do it. So me having to realize that he couldn't stay here pushed him to have to get to a situation where that thing was forced away from him. It wasn't a pretty situation and believe me, it went down pretty hard and it, I would have preferred it to be a little bit nicer, but it had to happen that way. And I do believe Merlin, one of my spirit guides, was in, his, had his hand in it because he's more into that kind of stuff where he's just like, all right, here you go. Pfft. You know, throw you off the fence and be like, okay, let's, get it. let's do this. No more waiting, no more pretending for the right moment for it to, you know, manifest. And so now... Like, the light is shining from him. He's he's humble. He's really humble again, and he's not freaking out. You know, he's working on himself. He's working on dealing with his, his past, finally. You know, and he's he's uh, raising his light quotient. And so it's, it's actually helping him out. It's helping us out as twin flames because we had that whole other thing, too. But I'm not going to get into that now. But basically, my point is for all of this is just some of these uncomfortable situations we've actually probably had to go through because one, we probably charted them into our lives, I believe so, to the point where we had to see it happen to somebody else for us to be aware of it. And we had to experience it ourselves for us to be aware of it so that we can bring it out, bring more light quotient back into our bodies and be able to feel and uplift ourselves for the ascension. There's a lot more that I need to say, but I'm going to actually cut it a little short here because 
Um, I'm all over the place a little bit now and my phone's about to die. But I just wanted to come on here and explain what was going on with me and if you guys are doing that too. If you're feeling any symptoms or whatever of what's going on, um, pain, uh, agitation, anything, watch the video I shared of Lori Ladd. She's beautiful, awesome. She's right on par. I love her. And um, also some of the Phil Good videos because he's really cool too and he knows his stuff as well. I will continue to share in here. Sorry I'm not on as much as I want to be, but there's a lot of other things that I'm still trying to deal with here. And hopefully after the new year, everything will be actually good here. And I am praying that the light quotient will suss everything out here in a peaceful and positive manner. Because I am kind of tired of all the little chaos. I'm like, I've had my fair share of chaos, believe me. I'm good now. You know, universe, I can, I can take a break now. It's all good. <laughs> um, and we'll go from there and we'll see what happens. So, um... I will let you guys go. Thank you for watching. Um, for all those that you haven't been able to catch on, um, comment below, replay when you watch this and stuff like that. And um, I will talk to you later. All right. Thank you for watching, everybody. Love, light, and blessings. Namaste. And believe me, you are worth it. You are everything. I am sending you love and light. Don't forget to call on Archangel Michael and Archangel Raphael for protection and health. If you need to, I work with them constantly now and they're always available for you. I even send them over to Chris's place to get whatever thing was off of him too. Um, and I'm working with them right now to help my older brother be more aware of the situation and be more sympathetic towards my cause. You can always call on them for that too. And your spirit guides and the Galactic Federation. I call on everybody. Believe me, I'm like, y'all going to come back here and help me out. Because <laughs> I need all the help I can get, especially now. So they like that. They want that to happen. They want you to call on them. That's why they're there. Because they're like, oh, finally, she's understanding, or he's understanding why we're here. Okay, let's get this done. Right. Awesome. And I did notice when I call on them, a lot more things happen a lot quickly. And in more of a positive avenue. Um, and also, I use a lot of crystals, too. So, um, I do a lot of my crystal and then my amethyst, too. So, well, you can do a lot of different avenues. I do my essential oils as well. And I meditate and, and listen to nice, soothing music and tones. So, there's a lot of different things you can do. But just remember, you are loved. I love you. I respect you. You are awesome. You are doing the best that you got and you are rocking this out. We are all rocking this out. Do not feel bad for anything that has happened so far. You are doing the best that you can with what we got right now and it is crazy out there right now. It is crazy. All right. Keep it up. You guys are light workers, way showers, and everything in the middle. I love it. All right. We are the ones for showing the way for the others. All right. We got this, light workers. All right, love, light, and blessings. Namaste. I will talk to you guys later. See ya.